Hello everybody, this is Mark from the Camera Stupid blog and website. I'd just like to thank everybody that's participating in the Camera Stupid Facebook photo sharing group. If you're not part of the group yet, come and join us. It's a ton of fun. I really do enjoy uh, seeing everybody's photos and answering photography questions there. Uh, I've got a good group there, a lot of good uh, friendly people. So go ahead and look us up on Facebook. I'll put the link uh, in this video description. But join the group there. It's a ton of fun. One of the questions we're getting in that group quite a bit is how to do a sky replacement. There's a few reasons you'd want to do a sky replacement. Take for example this this photo I took of the Utah State Capitol building in Salt Lake City. Uh, shooting this a little bit earlier in the afternoon uh, before go golden hour so in order to expose uh, the, the subject here correctly uh, that means the sky is going to be blown out. That's just one of the realities of shooting outdoors, uh, especially during midday or during the time when the sun is bright. So here in Lightroom under the develop tab, uh, there are some things we can do to uh, recover some of the sky, especially if you're shooting in raw. Uh, so we'll go over here to the exposure slider and we can bring that down a little bit and you can see uh, that some of the detail is in fact in the sky. And we can and then lift the shadows here to recover uh, the foreground a little bit and we could even bump the clarity up a touch maybe warm it up a little bit definitely if you're shooting raw you can recover some of the texture in the clouds that might have been that may have been blown out uh, but let's go ahead and look at uh, replacing the sky com completely maybe the sky is just not interesting at all or you want to uh, change the mood or, or create an image that is just more interesting so we're going to go ahead and take this image into Photoshop to do that. And to do that, I can just right click and then go to Edit In and select Adobe Photoshop. So here we are in Adobe Photoshop with the same image. So I'm going to go ahead and use this image of a different sky taken at a different time, different place, and use that to overlay onto this sky to try to make it a little bit more interesting. And so to do that, I've got both images open here and I'll just click on uh, the sky image and with the move tool selected I'm just gonna click and drag this image you're gonna hold keep it keep uh, keep holding and dragging and just drag it over this tab until Photoshop switches to that tab and then you can just release and that image will now be in this Photoshop document uh, once you've placed it there you can make sure that show transform controls is checked uh, that will allow you to uh, resize this layer. If you hold shift, it will maintain the aspect ratio. So I'm just going to stretch that out and make it uh, the same size as our base image. And then hit return and that will apply that transformation. And then you can position uh, that sky image wherever you think is going to be best. Now one way of combining these two images would be to use something like a uh, selection tool and try to cut out uh, the sky here uh, and go, going around the building and, and cutting that out or maybe the eraser tool and erasing a part of this image uh, but I find it's much easier and less destructive if we uh, use a little bit different method so what I'm going to do is uh, make sure this top layer is selected and then just go ahead and choose here under the blend modes so this this drop down is the blend mode drop down and we're going to change that to, uh, we'll try multiply. I think that'll work uh, pretty well. Uh, you can test some of these other uh, blend modes. And depending on the images that you're using, uh, one might work better than another. Uh, typically, overlay works pretty good. Or uh, multiply. Uh, and those are, those are typically what I'll use to do this. So you can see that we're now overlaying this sky image over the base bottom layer there. And that's good, and it's actually looking pretty good here in the sky. It's blending uh, pretty well. But we don't want the sky image to be overlaying over everything, just, just the area of the sky. So again, you could erase the bottom part of this image, or you could uh, select, select and delete that bottom portion. 
Uh, but a much better, and in my opinion, less destructive way to do that is to, with a mask, a layer mask. So down here, again, you're gonna have this top layer selected and choose this add layer mask option. And you'll see this little box pop up. And then in order to create the mask or affect the mask, uh, we're gonna choose a paintbrush. So here's a paintbrush, and I'm going to choose 100% uh, opacity. And you can see here we're going to paint with black. Now, anytime you paint black on a mask, it's going to make that part of the image transparent. And when you paint white, uh, that part of the image will be opaque. So you can see here as we start to paint black on this on this mask that's applied to that that sky image, we're going to start erasing, effectively erasing, the part that's being painted black. So you can see already we're starting to blend these two images together. And what I'm going to do is adjust the size of my brush and bring back some more of this building here. Now edges are a little more difficult because you can see if we paint this building back there's going to be kind of a halo where we're erasing too much of the sky we want to uh, we want to blend this so that, that doesn't happen so I'm just going to undo that and then I'm going to reduce the opacity of this brush we can bring it way down and just kind of clean up the edges here of the building and kind of blend those together and I don't mind a little bit of overlap because in a normal sunset like this, the color of the sunsets is going to um, is going to be reflected on the landscape and on any objects that are in the scene. So a little overlaps okay. The other thing with using this mask is that uh, if you overdo it someplace, like say we want to paint this building in, but then we decide we need to bring some more of the sky back, uh, you can just swap to white and paint again and that's going to now replace that, that sky image. We're now painting white and so the sky image will be opaque as we're painting and you can paint it back in uh, some of the sky and the key here is just to try to blend it in uh, to make it look natural. Uh, there's a shortcut key to swap white and black paint colors. You just press the X key and that will swap. You can see as I'm pressing X there, uh, it's changing from painting black to painting white. So you can quickly uh, change the color there. And then another key is the larger the brush and the softer the brush, the more gradual uh, the transition will be. And so you can use a big brush here that's pretty transparent to kind of blend uh, the horizon. And that's looking pretty good. Just try to clean up these edges a little bit more. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We can then toggle off this top layer to kind of see the difference. I, I quite like that effect. And by combining uh, both the original sky underneath with the new sky, I feel like it is a more convincing sky replacement. The other thing you can do to blend these now that it's uh, getting close to the way you like, uh, you can select the sky layer here and then change the, the general opacity of the entire thing uh, with this opacity slider. So play around, you get something that you like. Uh, I find that I find that the more you can blend the edges and make it look more natural, uh, the easier it is going to be to sell the shot, to sell the idea that uh, this was all taken in camera. You know, we're not necessarily trying to fool anybody, but we do want it to look uh, the best that it can. And this is your artwork, so it's your so it's your prerogative to uh, to build the image that's most pleasing to you, and and go from there. Uh, so that's the method I like to use. Another example here uh, using the sa same technique. In fact, I'm just keeping these these jets, and then uh, blending in a whole new background and sky uh, for a much more interesting shot than I think. Uh, the original was. The original was shot at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, so there's some lights in the way. Uh, the jets are from the nearby military base down there. 
And so uh, replacing and putting them in a, a whole new environment with a whole new sky, I think is a much more interesting shot to look at. So thanks for listening to this tutorial. Uh, check out more tutorials like this on the Camera Stupid website. That's camerastupid.com. Uh, one more thing, I am including a free download with this tutorial. I am including six sky stock images. These are uh, royalty free, uh, free to use for commercial or personal use. So go ahead and get that download. Uh, the link is in uh, the blog post or the description of this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.